Hello, this is Colin with Maker Farm. Uh, this video, we're going to show you how to build your extruder. Um, you're going to get a couple things. You're going to get, um, I usually like to have a knife, razor blade. We're going to have a wrench. You can have half inch um, or eight millimeter, depending on if you ordered a metric kit or not. Then I've just got some little Allen wrenches as well, which are nice to have. Um, you're also going to get your printed parts for your extruder. And then you're going to get your extruder hardware. Um, if you bought the full kit, it's all going to come um, in a bigger bag, but this one we're just going to do a small bag here. So if you want to dump out all your parts first, first thing we're going to do is clean up some parts. There's a few parts um, that have pieces on them that are built or that are put on there just for printing purposes. Like this has a little tab on the corner. We're just going to break that off. We also have a little support here um, that is for our idler, we can just break that off and there's still some material around there so I'm just going to just quickly cut that material off so that we're set. Um, also, where our hobbed bolt goes, you'll notice that hole is covered over. If you didn't have that covered over, all of this other material around it would sag down. So we put that in there. All you have to do is just get a knife and just kind of go around that hole So that we can put our hobbed bolt in there. And that's all you have to do. So there you can see now, now I've got a hole going through there. Um, another thing that's good to do, sometimes you need to do it, sometimes you don't. I like to bevel this edge just with my knife. So just kind of go around it, put a little bevel on it. Sometimes that'll get mushroomed out when it's printed because it is printed laying on the printer like this, okay? Um, other than that, we've got a couple holes that we need to clean out. I usually just take my little Allen wrench. Here's one of the holes that we need to clean out. So I just go ahead and push it in there so it pops out the other end and then you can just peel that off. Um, also where our motor, motor goes, we need to break those holes open. So I just do it like that, get some little needle nose pliers, and I can just pull all those things out so that we can put our bolts in to mount our motor, okay? So that's all the cleanup we have to do. There may be a couple little things you might wanna cut off um, on some of the other little pieces. And then the other cleanup that we want to do is for our small gear. Just want to do the same thing where our nut goes. Just do the same thing and bevel those edges so that we can easily get our nut in there when we put this on our motor. So we'll just quickly clean those up. Um, all of our gears now, all these small gears, are going to be pre-drilled to five millimeters. So they're going to be exactly five millimeters. You don't need to drill out the small gear at all. It is going to be a tight fit going on your um, motor shaft, but that's good. Usually, um, I'd always recommend you put the little set screw in there, but it's five millimeters, your shaft is five millimeters. It's so tight, you probably don't even need a set screw to actually hold that gear on there. Okay, so that's all the cleanup that we need to do. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is get our hardware bag. I'm gonna dump this out and start putting it together. First thing we're going to get is our extruder idler. And if you go ahead and get that, we're going to get a 608 bearing. And then we're also going to get um, our little dowel pin. If you put the dowel pin in there, line it up with your idler, and then just shove it in there. You may have to use a set of pliers. Push it down all the way. And that's it. Now our idler is put together. Uh, next thing we're going to do is our extruder body. I'm going to take my hobbed bolt apart. I'm going to get my hobbed bolt, put one washer on there, and you're going to get a 608 bearing and put it on there. And we're going to put it through on this side. You'll notice that the hob matches up with that hole. You can then take your other 608 bearing, put it on there. It may be a little difficult 
to push it all the way in there. If you don't bevel those edges, I'm going to bevel them a little more. on there. It doesn't go all the way in. It will go in when we actually put the large gear on and tighten it up. Okay. So after we get that bearing in, we're going to get three washers, put them on the other side. And then in just a minute, we're going to put our, our bolt on. But right now, we're going to work on connecting these two. And what we're going to get, you're going to get your large um, I think it's a 35 millimeter M3 bolt and it's going to go starting at this side and we're going to just push that on there. I'm just going to start tightening it up and as soon as it pops out the other side we'll go ahead and put a nut on there. I would recommend doing all these by hand. I wouldn't use power tools or power drills to do any of these things. It doesn't take that much time. Okay, so it's out there. We can just take a nut, put it on the other end. It doesn't need to be tied. We just need to make sure that it turns and then when it's all the way up that that 608 still turns freely. Now we're going to take our large gear and we're going to put it on there like this and you just start turning it. You can also hold it on this side with a wrench if you need to. Just let it keep tightening up. Once we get to about this point here we can go ahead and put our nuts on. Right now all of our kits come with your nuts so you'll just have two nuts that you'll put on there. First one I can hold the bolt with a wrench and as I just turn that it's going to pull that nut down in there. Okay, You don't want it too tight but I'm going to just keep tightening it up to pull this other bearing in all the way. Once it's in all the way we can back it off a little bit because we do want this to be secure but we don't want it to be um, too tight. So we can turn it, make sure that it turns well, turns freely. You can always loosen it up. And I'm just going to hold my large gear. I'm just going to take a wrench. I'm going to tighten up that other one. Okay, so now that our gear turns, we've got our idler on. We can put our springs in there. We're going to get the two large bolts. We're going to put a small washer on each of those. And you're going to take your springs, just put one spring on each that you have them like that. Then at top, the top of the extruder, make sure there's no debris in those holes. You're going to take your bolt or your nut, push it down in there. And I like to take needle nose pliers, and make sure that they're all the way down. And then I can take my bolts, I can put one of them in the holes there. And then I can just start tightening it up. Sometimes you do need to take your needle nose pliers push down on that bolt or that nut so it doesn't turn while you tighten that up. And then do the same for the other one. Just get it in there. Start turning it. You don't need to tighten these really tight. And then we can go ahead and test to make sure that it's spring loaded. Um, the next thing is for our small gear. We're going to do the same thing. You're just going to take a, a nut put it in there. I like to use needle nose pliers to shove it all the way in and push it down. Once it's pushed all the way down you can see through there through the hole. Then I can take my little grub set screw and just make sure it goes in straight. Just 
just put a couple turns on there, but don't let the grub screw come into the hole. Um, if you purchase just an extruder kit, it will not come with the motor. If you purchased a full kit with motors, it will have the motor. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to put this gear on there. Usually what I do, it's hard to push it on by hand. Um, you don't want to push it on too far because we're going to align everything up here. But usually I will get it and I'll hold on to the motor like this and I'll push it onto the floor, a concrete floor like that, to actually shove that gear on. You don't want to push it on too far though. So I'm going to push it on a little bit, and then I'm going to hold it up here and see how our alignment is. It's still off. Push it some more. Check our alignment. We're almost there. Pretty close. Hold it up to our motor again, and there you go. We're all set. Okay, so now we can just finish tightening that set screw. It doesn't need much. Once it stops turning freely, just turn it a tiny little bit. Okay, not much. If you do it too much, you'll see it'll start to get really white right on the sides where that nut is and it'll start cracking. Um, like I said, you really don't even really need that set screw. I had to push that on there so tight and it's such a good fit that you don't need it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is attach our motor um, I like to have my wires coming out this way, coming out this way from my extruder. So now all you need to do is just line up the holes. You can drop a bolt down in there, get it somewhat loose, go on to the next ones. one. Once you've got them all in there just a little bit, we want to try and push our motor into our extruder. I mean, we don't, basically what we're doing is we're getting rid of all the backlash here. We don't want there to be a big space in between those two gears. So once you can get it compressed together, you can go ahead and tighten these up. like that and we have a fully working and assembled extruder I'm gonna grab a hot end real quick and show you how um, you would mount those so if you have your hot end it's going to come with an acrylic mounting plate basically you can take that plate and your hot end is going to go on the bottom. It's going to sit right in that hole right there. And then the plate is going to go underneath it like that. You're then going to take your extruder, or sorry, your X carriage, and it is going to mount just like that. So that's how you're going to have your whole hot end set up. If you notice, the wires go out the back so that you can zip tie them to your motor wires. If the wires go in front, it's going to interfere with your gear. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, of course, you can always uh, go to our website, makeafarm.com. You can email us from there and make sure to check out our new products as well.